Hi, you've clicked on to today's tropical tidbit for Friday, June 15th. Here's the Atlantic, and uh, we notice right away that there's a lot of pickup and activity showing up now in uh, this area of the world, the Western Caribbean and the Eastern Pacific. Notice we now have a hurricane sitting down here. Carlotta has formed and now has an eye and is probably reaching upper category 2, low end category 3 intensity right now at her peak and is going to be moving towards the Mexican coastline, very close to the coastline. Not sure if it'll be a direct landfall yet as the models are rather swaying back and forth between that scenario, but it's going to be a brush of the coastline and certainly uh, hurricane warnings are up for the coast of Mexico and they were going to have to be dealing with the storm during the next couple of days. Notice that we have the convection here starting to creep northward and we're going to be watching in general for this monsoonal circulation in here. That's what this is, is the monsoonal belt is going to be swelling northward and eventually making it into the Bay of Campeche here and the western Gulf of Mexico with time as we head into in next week. And the fact that Carlotta is moving close towards Mexico here instead of moving out to sea like most East Pacific storms do illustrates that this is already beginning to occur in here and we will be seeing this thunderstorm activity move northward slowly as the days go by here. Now here's the MJO, and uh, we can see the black line is the observed here, so we're right here as of the 14th, as of yesterday, we were moving out of phase 7 and coming into phase 8 here, and you can see the model forecast taking it into phase 8 and 1, and these two phases support upward motion in the eastern Pacific and the western Atlantic. Remember, the MJO is a wave of upward motion and downward motion that moves eastward across the equator and the tropical areas of the world, west to east in general not always but in general west to east and you can see on the upward motion map here what we have we have the general area of greatest upward motion in the green here showing up in the eastern pacific and moving towards the caribbean now and uh, you can see the browns over in the indian ocean and africa illustrating the corresponding downward motion pulse on the other side of the world so right now we're on the side of the world where the mjo wave is bringing upward motion to our area and that supports rising air and thunderstorm activity and it helped Carlotta to, Carlotta to form and may help us to get a storm uh, later next week. Now here's the NAFE's ensemble forecast, mean sea level pressure, day 5, 124 out, 120 hours out next week and notice that we have the isobars, lines of constant pressure here aimed southeast to northwest here out of the Caribbean and into the northwest Gulf of Mexico. Now whenever you have relatively high pressure over the southeast United States like you can see here and yet the isobars are angled northwest at an angle greater than the angle made by the island of Cuba, you generally are getting a lot of low level convergence in here. In other words, a great piling up of air because the trade winds are coming out of the Atlantic in here and then they're being forced to curve northwest while high pressure is still over the southeast US which means there's the air has to slow down and pile up in here and when the air piles up it's forced to rise upward because it's piling up at the surface and obviously it can't go into the ground so it has to rise upward and the rising upward is what can generate thunderstorm activity and then the air spreads out at the top of the atmosphere and causes air pressure to lower at the surface which is why you start to see the models catching on to the slow development of low pressure in the western part of the Gulf of Mexico next week. Not quite showing up yet here on the NAFES at 120 hours, but by 168 you can really see uh, that it starts to move towards Texas. I'm not going to show you that, but I'm going to show you the Canadian here. This is the ensemble forecast at 500 millibar uh, showing um, at day five, same as the image before. Notice we have the ridge uh, in the mid-levels moving into New England here, and we have this trough in the west. And this trough in the west is important because if we have anything at all brewing down here of monsoonal nature, this trough over here is going to be trying to draw this northward towards Texas and Louisiana. How far north it gets is still the big question right now. Uh, but what happens is when we go out to another two days to 168 hours, day seven, the trough starts to flatten and move towards the east here, and we get this ridge that Start building back into the southwest United States. Notice that we have lowering heights in the northwest Gulf, indicating there could be some kind of low pressure there. But what's going to happen is as this trough lifts out, this is going to get stuck down here, at least shortly. Not 
perhaps for a long time, but this is a very similar pattern again to the Allisons of 1989 and 2001, both west gulf storms in June that moved into Texas, and uh, the trough brings it north, but then it gets trapped and probably moved westward by the ridge that is building into the southwest. It's also possible that as this trough redigs into the northeast U.S. in a couple more days, such a storm could get taken out to the east-northeast, similar to the Allison in 2001. But uh, it's still an iffy thing right now because the details are not going to be known this far out. However, the general idea is that we get a storm that gets drawn north by the trough initially and then gets cut off by the ridge moving into the west and uh, gets either uh, shifted westward into northern Mexico or southern Texas or somewhere in that region or perhaps kicked out to the northeast later when the trough redigs in. But a kind of blocking setup that we have here that could bring some heavy rain to this area of the world uh, next week. And uh, here's the sea level pressure for 168 hours. You can notice, I'm going to zoom in on this a little bit here. Uh, the red symbols, numbers, and letters here indicate on different ensemble members showing uh, locations of low pressure and a tropical cyclone in this case. Notice we have a clustering near the Texas coastline here, indicating that the Canadian ensembles are seeing the potential for a storm to move into the northwest Gulf of Mexico. And we shouldn't be focusing too much on the exact location right now. Uh, the models are. Uh, battling between northern Mexico and Texas right now. But the general idea I want uh, you to get out of this is that the western Gulf of Mexico is getting a shot of activity next week. And uh, this is likely staying out of the eastern Gulf of Mexico for the time being. Will likely be a west Gulf of Mexico event. Whether it's Texas or Mexico or Louisiana at this point, still not entirely sure. But this area is going to be lighting up uh, later next week. And the GFS is starting to catch on to this as well. This is the GFS Ensemble mean precipitation you can see by day 7, showing a lot of concentration in the northwest gulf here off the Texas coastline. And uh, the operational run has been consistently now showing a moderate tropical storm coming up here and then curving uh, towards the Rio Grande Valley for several runs in a row now. So the GFS is catching on to this. And uh, you notice uh, the ensemble mean 250 millibar winds in the upper atmosphere showing a clockwise rotation over the northwest Gulf of Mexico indicating upper level high pressure which of course is favorable uh, for tropical development and intensification because it favors upper divergence aloft and helps to lower pressures at the surface and indicates low wind shear that can allow intensification of any kind of storm that is there. So the monsoonal gyre is going to be swelling northward here in a big way as the MJO uh, helps favor this and uh, all the way into the northwest Gulf here and the sea surface temperatures are getting pretty warm now. They're uh, whole degree Celsius above normal in the western Gulf. These reds and oranges down here, you can see the scale down here, are 28 to 29 degrees Celsius, more than a degree warmer than they are supposed to be for this time of year. So there are definitely some favorable conditions and fuel out there for a storm to form in this area of the world, and we're going to have to watch closely next week, next weekend, and possibly into early the week after. Um, and we are creeping up on this now. We've been talking about it for a couple of weeks, and uh, we shall see what happens. All right, that's it for today. Thanks for watching.